I was wandering around the office, you know, deciding what to talk about today, and someone mentioned content creation for doctors. And I thought that was a perfect recommendation because it's such a hot topic right now um, for a variety of reasons. So when it comes to creating content, of course, if you have the basics out of the way, right, you should have a page for each of your major services. You should have pages dedicated to the symptoms that you treat, the procedures that you offer. I hope that that's basic and ingrained in your website just as your content. So now, what can you do to continue creating content time and time again and in help your website in all the ways that I've described? So what I recommend is a little bit of reverse engineering in that think about a potential patient or a potential client who might not even be aware of you and your services. What problems might they have? What pain might they be experiencing? And generally, what questions could that equate to that they might be sitting down and typing into their, into their Google search where you could show up? So let me give you a couple examples. One is one of our clients that we're very proud of um, out in Utah. There's a chiropractor that treats the whole family. So just as in his daily course of writing blog articles, he decided to do one on baby strollers because he sees children, he sees toddlers, he sees babies, helps them with chiropractic treatments. So he wrote an article from the lens of a chiropractor, it was just a couple paragraphs, breaking down which baby strollers he recommends or doesn't recommend. Now, as things turned out, in his area in Utah, this article got enough views and got enough traction that even if you just Google baby stroller in his area, his article pops up at the top of Google first result. So you could literally just be someone shopping for a baby stroller and come across his article. Now, if you're a new parent and you see an article or a web link titled, you know, which, best, which baby strollers are best for your child's you know, posture or chiropractic care or back, you're gonna be interested and you're gonna take a look and you're gonna value that advice. So yes, I understand most people that are buying baby strollers have no interest in signing up, uh, signing up to, for a pediatric chiropractor or might not be interested in that. But the point is that he's now positioned his website and he's gaining a ton of traffic off of a related keyword uh, in baby strollers. And now a lot of new parents out there will discover his website, even though they're not looking for a chiropractor, click on it, and if they didn't know about his business, they're gonna learn who he is, where he is, what the phone number is, and if nothing else, file that information away for later, but hopefully position himself as an expert so that if they're ever at the point where they do need a solution, they think of him first. Now another example, funny enough, also a chiropractor from my own personal life, um, I recently was trying to get more exercise and I saw a treadmill and I thought, all right, this is easy, let me get on the treadmill, go as hard as I can in terms of working out, that'll be great for me. So being the novice that I am, I dialed up the incline as high as it would go, I went to the highest speed that I could handle, and I did that for a couple days. Now, a few days later, I noticed that my lower back was really hurting. And while I had to guess why, I had no idea what the problem was. So I actually sat down, you know, here at work, and I Googled, I recently started using a treadmill, my lower back hurts. And you know, unbeknownst to me, the first result that popped up, kind of proof of concept, was a local chiropractor. And they had a page on their website where they were detailing certain elements. And I scrolled through it and I was reading. And it actually said on there, you know, running on a treadmill. And then it said, one thing to look out for is running too steep of an incline because that can cause back pain. And as soon as I read that, everything clicked for me. I was like, oh yeah, there was a reason that 15 was red on the treadmill and I ignored it when I pressed on it. That makes total sense, and I just didn't think about that beforehand, and I didn't isolate that as the reason for my pain initially, but once I saw it on the page, it made complete sense. So that chiropractor, just by providing useful information to me, got me to visit his website, pay attention, and at least appreciate what he was offering. Now, I didn't need a chiropractor, but if I did, I, there's obviously a lot of reasons why I would um, choose him, you know, or at least be aware of him as an option. We have a veterinarian um, out on the East Coast. She wrote a long time ago an article about cats and wires, and I think the dangers associated with that or why they like to play with that. It somehow got picked up somewhere on the internet, and to this day, years later, it drives a significant percentage of her website traffic, which is almost frustrating for her because those aren't potential clients, but it's still really healthy for the website. So my advice 
is to brainstorm the situation or the setting that a potential client uh, or patient would be in 